Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. In this week's video, we are going through my updated wilderness medical bag. So a little bit of context before we get started. Um, I was deployed out as a ambulance fire line medic uh, for a wildfire we're having here in Colorado. Uh, this is a 14 day deployment. We're out here, we camp out at one of the forward operating bases and we basically are here to support the fire line operations if somebody gets hurt, um, we're the medical component to that. So this has ha given me a lot of time to kind of think about what I want in the pack. I've had some experiences which make me kind of rearrange things very seldom does any of my gear stay the same because as you start experiencing more, you have more situations, it's really good to go through your stuff and really figure out what you need and what you don't need. And that'll help you cut weight and become way more efficient as a medic. So with all of that being said, I'll put this down and we can start going through it uh, piece by piece and kind of explaining what I've changed and what I still have in it. All right, so I kind of apologize for the weird angle uh, of this video. Obviously, um, I don't do not have my usual filming setup, um, and I'm still not sure how I'm going to upload these with the kind of Wi-Fi we have. So uh, we'll see if this gets up in good time. Anyways, uh, going over this pack on the outside, you'll see a couple changes I made. Uh, number one, on the side here, I took off the minor medication bag I had. It was just taking up a lot of space. Um, instead, I have a tool from. Soar Rescue, that this basically, you can take this and you can hang IV fluid on it. And I can actually hang that right here and walk with multiple bags uh, attached and flowing into the patient without having to hold them. It's also really good for the cot uh, pram mounts for your bags. You can hang this on it and basically lets it uh, hang more than one drip at a time comfortably to kind of organize that. So it's really easy and light, so I just threw it on here. And then next to that, I've got Winkler Knives uh, Fire Tool, which its application out here is relatively limited, but I've noticed that having a pry bar in basically any situation is super helpful. Um, and then this pick here can be used for any number of things, um, including escaping from ice. Uh, so have this in here just in case. And then on the other side, I still have the North American Rescue Traction Splint. Um, this is their tactical traction splint. It's just a lot easier than the um, Sagers or the Hairs. Uh, this is just a bunch of tent poles that fold out and allows you to pull traction on somebody's mid-shaft femur. Uh, that's really important and something that I really want to have on any of my kits, just because you can lose so much blood from the femur, which can actually be reduced by uh, pulling traction on the leg. So I keep this in here because obviously we're a ways from help while we're out here in the Rocky Mountains. So I wanna do everything I can to limit the blood loss, even that if that's internal. So I have this on here. Now in these two front pockets, I've changed these around as well. So in this one here, um, I've labeled it blowout because it's not really technically a bleed kit um, because I have multiple things in there. This is basically the contents of two IFAX in one. So in here, I have two things of your combat gauze and there's really no difference between the um, military and the LE one. They're just different colors. So whatever you like, you can get. I happen to have both of these, so I threw them in there. Both hemostatic gauze. Um, beyond that, I have an MPA 28 French, uh, MPA with uh, some lube on the back of it, just in case. In here, I've got two H&H &H, uh, trauma dressings. These guys are just flat folded trauma dressings for wrapping ahead or wrapping in that wound pack that you just did. Uh, really great for bleeding control. And then last but not least, I have one set of hyphen chest seals, uh, which basically go in any IFAC. Now, next to this, I've changed this as well. You'll notice on the tape here, I have uh, medications listed. And in here it says ketamine, 100 milligrams per milliliter. My handwriting's not the best. Fentanyl, 50 milligrams per milliliter. Midazolam, one milligram per milliliter, and so on and so forth. And basically this gives me my emergent drugs that I'm most likely to use um, that are weight-based meds because I can take these and then I can take whatever the patient weighs 
and do my drug calcs before I even get there. Now on the fire line, it doesn't really apply as much, but say on a warrant mission or on a SAR call, we usually know who the person is we're going and we know what they weigh about. So I can usually sit down and do all of my drug calcs before we're even there and figure out how many milliliters from each vial I have to draw up um, to actually administer that to them. So uh, super great to have on that. And it was just kind of a lesson learned on a SWAT call out that it was nice to have so I didn't have to keep on opening up the narc box. In here, I've got administration sets. So um, while IV access is not your primary concern in trauma, what I've noticed is that a lot of the calls we're going on with law enforcement or uh, in these other situations end up being medical issues uh, at the end of the day or need some kind of sedation or intervention. So in here, I just have two sets of IV administration. Now these are just everything that I would need to start an IV and they're all put together in one so I don't have to dig for it. That was kind of a lesson learned for me is that if they're in multiple places, uh, I'm, it, it's gonna slow me down substantially and could result in harm of the patient. So I wanna keep that up uh, as much as possible. In here, I have two med admin pockets. So uh, these are just for your IM medication administration. I have one with a 10 mil syringe and then I've got one with a uh, five mil syringe for um, the most common meds we're gonna be giving in that emergent situation. On the front here, you've noticed that I didn't actually have the tourniquets on here before. Um, I have decided to kind of leave them on the outside. If it rains, I can put them under the flap or something, but it just keeps them more accessible, more visible if somebody else has to use the pack and it frees up a lot of space on the inside. This is pretty full to the brim. So two cat tourniquets there. And then I have a pair of trauma shears. Unfortunately, I forgot my X shears at home, but they're kind of my preferred uh, trauma shears for this pack. I just had to borrow one from base camp to throw in here uh, just for that rapid patient access and getting to the injury in a hurry. All right, coming into the lid of the pack. Um, this is something that I will change out when I get off the fire line. These are just things that I felt were helpful while we're here, um, but they're not really emergency medical related. In here, I've got two bottles of water. Um, just good, you know, if we're hiking somebody out, it's good to give them some water. And then of course we carry some for ourselves. I have one MRE and food's never your primary concern if you're in a survival situation, but if you are spiked out somewhere and you forgot something else, an MRE is kind of a lifesaver. And then in the top, I've got some other things, mask in case I forgot mine, uh, some toilet paper, uh, bug spray, sunscreen, some hand warmers, a lantern that I can put up on a scene and kind of light everything up. It's not super powerful, it's just a Coleman. And then a uh, roll of duct tape for kind of a fix all. And this will all be coming out. I'll keep some of it in here, but for like SWAT operations, I don't really need this stuff up in uh, this pocket of the pack. All right, coming into the pack itself. In here, I have a number of things. So uh, first and foremost, uh, up here, I've got everything for airway and breathing. So in this clear pocket, this is the quickest things I'm gonna grab. Right up front, I've got an MPA that pops out because this is gonna be a first step before starting uh, bag valve mask respirations. In here, I have a micro BVM and I swear by these things. Um, they're just super compact. Uh, we'll let you breathe for the patient. Um, I've got a number of them and they basically go in any kit I have because I do not like doing mouth to mouth respirations. Would much rather do a bag valve mask. So have that in there to breathe for people. I have two ARS needles for needle decompression of the chest if they have a tension pneumo. And then I have a pair of McGill forceps if somebody's choking. And last but not least, I have a plethora of vented chest seals. Um, these are kind of all just my extras. Most likely I'll use the one on my chest rig. If you haven't seen that video, I did that last week on what I have on me, or I'll use it, be using it on one of my vest IFACs. Um, so these are kind of an afterthought in here. They can also be used for some abdominal wounds uh, and other issues. Just good to have it on you and I keep it in the airway section. So next to that, um, in this one that's labeled airway, I have a small airway roll from North American Rescue. And like I was talking about last week, the patient population we're seeing is almost exclusively adults and a majority male, which cuts down on the sizes of blades I need to carry. If I carried a whole intubation roll, I just wouldn't have room for uh, practically anything. So this one, all I have in here is a Mac 4 
and then a Mac 3 to accommodate two different sizes. I've got the handle in here, a 10 ml syringe, and a uh, scalpel for the potential surgical cricothyrotomy. Uh, this is all rolled up and it's right on top of this pocket. Now in here, I've got a number of things. So I've got all of my adult sizes of uh, endotracheal tubes, a tube secure, and then I have a travel bougie uh, for helping insert um, the airway if need be. That all fits right in the side pocket, and I can pull this out and throw this to somebody if somebody else is actually going to do the airway. Uh, that'll get that out of the way for me. So, um, also as a backup, I do have a eye gel in here, and this is just the uh, four, so somebody might be too big, too small for this one, but this is the most standard size for adults which is the why, why I carry this one. These things are not compact. They're pretty thick and they don't compress down. So they're kind of hard to carry, uh, but it's a very simple option uh, in this environment. All right, on the other side here, um, it's kind of an outside pocket, it's hard to see, but in here I'm carrying just a SAM splint and that just slides into the outside of this pack um, pretty easily and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. In the IV kit, this is exactly what it sounds like. So in here, I just have two drop sets. I carry a bag of dextrose 10% for your diabetic patients. And then I am only carrying a 500 ml bag of saline. Once again though, this kit is to supplement an ALS ambulance. So this isn't meant to be 20 miles into the wilderness. This is only meant to have what I need right now. Um, so this can start the process of rehydrating somebody. Um, and then it's also great for you know, to have a bag flowing in cardiac arrest or something like that where we're giving a lot of meds altogether. One of the biggest changes I made to this kit was I uh, basically consolidated the airway stuff up here to make room for more medications. And I kind of stopped carrying a lot of the cardiac meds because those are in the ambulance with the monitor. In a wilderness situation, I don't need most of them with me. So generally there's three kits. The narc box is locked in the ambulance. Thought it probably wouldn't look super great to unlock that and bring the narcotics in the woods by myself. Um, so the narcotics box, that guy has ketamine, fentanyl, morphine, rocuronium, uh, succinicholine, uh, midazolam, and lorazepam, and atomidate in it, which basically treats your seizures, pain, sedation, and it gives you everything you need to perform a rapid sequence intubation, which is intubating a patient. So I have all those in here, usually right in here uh, next to these two other kits. In this guy, you'll recognize this from my SWAT kit. Um, this has my most commonly given medications and things that uh, are gonna make a difference for a patient right now. Uh, in here, I've got diphenhydramine, mag sulfate. Um, so this is for your minor allergic reactions, and then you give it in conjunction with that being your severe allergic reactions. Mag sulfate can be used for a number of things. Uh, mainly in here, it's for its bronchodilation in your severe asthma attacks. Uh, I'm carrying epinephrine. So this is epinephrine 1 to 1,000 for anaphylaxis. We draw that up and give it. We don't carry EpiPens or anything like that. Um, in here, it's metoclopramide, which is a antiemetic for nausea and vomiting. Glucagon for your diabetic emergencies. Zofran, I have both oral and the vial for uh, nausea and vomiting. And then in here, I've got solumedrol, which is a uh, steroid we use uh, to be given to somebody with a severe allergic reaction or asthma that helps open up the airway over time. Um, I've got a bunch of aspirin for your chest pain. And then last but not least, uh, nitroglycerin spray uh, for your chest pains and your MIs. On the back, I have all the stuff I need to administer these meds. And then I also have the addition of two uh, Narcans, a little bit less applicable in the wilderness, um, but it's an easy med to carry. And then I have the injectors for that here. Coming down here, I am just carrying the Soar Rescue pillbox. So this thing is awesome. This has all your minor stuff, which is why I don't carry it on the outside anymore, because this just protects it better and is more organized. In here, we've got acetaminophen, ibuprofen, diphenhydramine, bismuth, lopramide, meclizine, multi-system cold, burn cream, hydrocortisone, hydrocortisone, yeah, can't talk, hydrocortisone, uh, antibiotic ointment, moleskin, band-aids, cough drops, electrolyte drink mix, and eye drops. So obviously this is really great to have in a wilderness environment or even a tactical environment to make people more comfortable. The more comfortable somebody is, the better they're gonna perform at their job, which is really important at these kind of high stakes uh, uh, professions. And on the side here, 
I've got some oral glucose and I have uh, neosinephrine. All right, um, coming to the lid of the pack here. And here I've got all the minor bandaging stuff. So I've got a number of different cravats, uh, which are great for, you know, splinting, making a sling and swath. I have in here, it's a dry sterile uh, burn dressing and it's a cravat. So it doubles as both from North American Rescue. And then in uh, the top, I've got an IT clamp, which is for your bleeding, uh, like on the neck or the head. This is just something that has teeth that bites over the scalp and the skin and closes it together. Looks gnarly, but it works pretty well. And then I've got um, some other cravats and some ace wrap and uh, Coban um, for any number of other injuries. Finally, in this pocket here, it's all my vitals equipment. So. Uh, notably, I am missing a glucometer right now. Uh, we are short of them on the truck, so I need to get one in here. Um, but generally, patient history, especially in a wilderness situation, can kind of tell you uh, if that's the issue they're experiencing or not. I have a um, Innovo uh, pulse oximeter for the finger, which is super great to have. I have my Lipman cardiology, master cardiology stethoscope, a blood pressure cuff, and then a pen light. The other thing I really need to get in here is a uh, small end tidal capnography monitor, especially for our intubated patients. Um, it's a, a vital piece of equipment to have. Um, they're just a little bit expensive and work will not pay for it. So saving up for that and hope to have that in this kit soon. So there are a couple other little hidden pockets um, on this kit to go through. On the top here, in here, I have a fern dressing. So this is a large burn sheet. Um, so obviously we're on a fire line, there's a high potential for burns uh, out here. So it's good to have this. And then this can also kind of double as a large trauma bandage. And coming up to the top here, this one's hard to access, but in the top you've got this guy. And this is a ready heat pack. Um, I bought this from North American Rescue and it basically cocoons the patient. It's got a bunch of hot packs on it and has foil on the inside to um, make sure that patients stay warm. Hypothermia is a pretty big deal. And this pack, which this is the rats uh, pack by Mystery Ranch, Ranch, by the way. This pack in here has a foam fold out that you can place under a patient to get them off the ground and stop that uh, conduction from occurring for heat loss. All right, the last thing on this kit we're gonna go through is the bottom pocket. So in here, this hasn't changed from how it was. In here, I have a mega mover for patient movement. Not perfect, but in a pinch it'll work. So um, just a couple things on like philosophy of use of this pack. You know, this isn't a high speed 20 mile hike search and rescue pack. This is a pack that's supported by a larger vehicle. So whether that's an ambulance or a helicopter, I have other supplies and I'm not hiking that far away from it. Now I will say I've taken this on uh, five mile hike rescues and it's been just fine. Um, so I can go a decent ways, but if I was doing a multi-night thing, I'd need a different kit uh, for it. Otherwise, this thing works great and I have absolutely loved it. Um, I'm kind of switching over to one kit for both SWAT and search and rescue because when uh, stuff really hits the fan, I need one kit that I know where everything is that I'm intimately familiar with. I'll just change some of the setups uh, depending on the mission profile. And some of you might point out that this thing is really thick um, which won't be conducive for a stack in a SWAT environment. However, most of the time I have everything I need to treat a patient on my persons. And then this is dropped at the door before uh, we go inside the house. So it can be easily retrieved, but it's not something I'm carrying with me on those operations. Uh, so I found it works pretty well. Guys, that's all I have for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below and I will see you next week.